What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Cosmic Wonder. I'm Warren Thompson and it really is a great week to be a Marvel fan. Deadpool and Wolverine, the official fantastic forecast and now the official trailer and release date for X-Men 97. It's like Marvel heard everybody talking about the current state of Marvel and went, oh, all right, well, hit them with everything we got right now. And boy, did it hit hard. I mean, that scene where Gambit jumps on the back of Wolverine and charges up his claws was epic. And I'm sure there are a lot of people out there like me who really got their superhero love started with the original X-Men animated series in 1992. This is actually me as Wolverine. The X-Men animated series got me into Wolverine and other superheroes. This is probably around 1994, 1995. And I absolutely loved Wolverine and the X-Men and Spider-Man during this time. So this is a real treat for me and I'm sure a lot of other people just like me as well. And even if you are younger, I'm super excited for you to see the series and I hope you go back and watch the original animated series because it was awesome. So let's go ahead and break down what we saw in this trailer. They didn't give us too much but still, we get a lot at the same time. And if you want to stay up to date on the X-Men 97 animated series, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the latest videos. We're also giving away an Xbox Series X and a PS5. More on the giveaway at the end of the video. So the original X-Men animated series lasted for five seasons, 76 episodes, and it ran between 1992 and ended, you guessed it, at 1997, which is exactly where we are picking up from, X-Men 97. Now, when the original original series ended in 1997, it ended with the episode Graduation Day. This was in the fifth season where they introduced Nightcrawler, and in the fourth season they defeated Apocalypse. But Graduation Day came back and explored the one big X-Men question. Can mutants and humanity, humans, coexist with each other? Or will their coexistence only end in war? Well, the ending ended with a mutant human summit, and Gyrich uses an electronic device on Professor X to out him as a telepath, and he ends up really hurting him in the process, and he starts to die, essentially. The X-Men aren't able to save him, so they turn to Magneto, and Magneto summons Lalandra to heal him. However, she can't heal him on Earth. She has to take him back to the Shi'ar homeworld to save him, and that's kind of where we pick up here, but it looks like Professor X is back on Earth and he dies. Now, at least that's what they're really trying to lead us to believe. Does he actually die? Who knows? It does look like they have a funeral for him. Looks like we see a vigil in here as well. So they definitely want us to believe that Professor Xavier has died. And now the X-Men are Cyclops' X-Men, as we saw in that one epic scene. Now the trailer starts off with some great nostalgia. We see a old school TV. It turns on and says, watch the series finale of X-Men next Saturday morning. Check your local listings, which is a thing we actually had to do back in. Now as it zooms in on the TV to the left, we can see a picture of Cyclops, Scott Summers, and Jean Grey together. On the right side, we can see an old action figure for an uncanny X-Men Colossus. Again, just hitting you with the nostalgia. Then they hit you with a very, very very short recap, which I basically just hit you with. Again, they're implying that Professor Xavier is gone. They're implying that he's dead and the X-Men do not have their leader anymore. Now, flash forward to the city, and I've already seen some people catch this, but if you freeze frame on the newspaper that flies by, it's a Daily Bugle newspaper, of course, and it says, Inside Scoop, Mutant Fashion Show, but look up top. It asks the question, is Spider-Man a mutant? Now we know they're doing a Spider-Man series, but as far as we know, it's not a reboot of the original one. Although I know everybody would absolutely love for that to happen and for a Spider-Man cameo to happen in this show, but we haven't heard anything about that yet. However, I do love the Spider-Man Easter egg with the Daily Bugle newspaper asking the question, is Spider-Man a mutant? Obviously, we all know the true origin story of Spider-Man, but the public inside this universe, of course, does not. Now we move on and we hear Scott saying, we need to stay vigilant. The professor trusted us with his dream. And then they show us a bunch of people protesting mutants. We see signs that say down with mutants. The sign on the bottom cuts off, but I think it might say evolution is a lie. The other sign says back to where you came from. The other sign says stop mutants, which is an actual stop sign. And if you take a look in the very back on the bottom right side, you can see a sign that says FOH, which stands for Friends of Humanity, which is an anti-mutant hate group. So 
again, we're picking up right where we left off in 1997, where we're asking that question, can mutants and humans coexist? And the answer seemingly right now is no, but that is what Professor Xavier wanted, and that is what Scott is referring to when he says the professor entrusted us with his dream, his dream that mutants and humans could coexist. Then we hear the voiceover of Storm saying, no matter how dark it is, we must believe in each other. And as she says this, we see a few things. Notice the statues of Professor Xavier and Magneto. This is a little tease of Gnosha here, the mutant homeland. And what else we see is the return of the Sentinels. And it seems like they are going to be playing a pretty prominent role, just like they have many, many times in the X-Men animated series and going up against the X-Men. Then from here, we get shots of our X-Men team. We have Cyclops, of course. We have Beast, Wolverine, Storm, Morph, who, if you noticed, has a new look. He's sporting that white, hairless head as seen in Marvel's Exile comics. We have Gambit, we have Bishop, we have Rogue, Jubilee, and Nightcrawler is returning as well. This is our official X-Men 97 team. And we get a lot of awesome shots here. We literally get to hear Wolverine call Scott Bub. We see the X-Men fighting the Sentinels. We get this epic scene of Gambit jumping on Wolverine's back, charging him up. And then two slash three, they kind of blend together. Really important things. One is we see that Jean Grey is pregnant. And the big question to that is, which baby is Jean currently pregnant with? The story of Jean being pregnant in the comics is pretty messy. Essentially, she has two children, Cable and Rachel Summers. Of course, the children of Scott Summers. However, Cable's real mother is actually Jean's clone, Madeline Pryor, in the comics, while Rachel is Scott and Jean's daughter from the alternate Days of Future Past timeline. Like I said, it's messy. So I'm curious to see kind of which story they go with for the X-Men 97 series, or if they kind of make up a new story, which I'm gonna assume they're going to do. But if we hear any more information about this, we'll be sure to let you know. I'm sure we won't find out though until the series actually begins. The other important part that is kind of a twofer that I mentioned is the classic line that Cyclops is now saying to me, my X-Men. Cyclops is now the leader of the X-Men, which I absolutely love. I love the storyline. I'm glad he's not being sidelined. And I'm actually hoping that in the MCU for the live action new X-Men team that is coming, Cyclops is going to be a leader. After he says to me, my X-Men notice in the top right, Rogue comes in because she can fly carrying Beast and Bishop. She drops them off and lands herself. Meanwhile, on the left, Storm carries in Gambit. We see Morph drop on the left and Wolverine drop on the right. And these are our X-Men. Minus G Jubilee. Jubilee is not in this scene. Since in the X-Men animated series, she was kind of a rookie, she could be the one flying the jet here. Although in the scene before, it looked like Cyclops was flying it and Jubilee was nowhere to be found, but we see her all throughout this trailer, so we know she's there. So the two-parter to this, to Cyclops's X-Men, is also the final scene of the trailer where Magneto reads the last will and testament of Charles Xavier and explains to the X-Men that Charles left everything to him, his old friend, his old buddy, Magneto, implying that Magneto is actually going to be the leader of the X-Men in the X-Men 97 series. Now, I'm sure there's going to be a struggle with the X-Men following Scott, aka Cyclops, or Magneto, especially when Professor Xavier's views and Magneto's views never were really eye to eye, with Professor X always wanting humans and mutants to coexist with each other, with Magneto always believing that mutants were superior. And judging from the scene, it looks like Magneto kind of broke into the X mansion. As you can see, they all come coming in to what is probably Professor X's room, and none of them are really dressed. Wolverine doesn't have a shirt on, Cyclops is in a tank top, Gambit doesn't have a shirt on, everybody's pretty casual. So it looks like Magneto just shows up and is like, hey, by the way, in case you didn't read Charles's will, I'm in charge of everything now, which is going to make for a very interesting story. And again, I do believe that Professor X is going to return. I think they're just trying to convince us that he's gone, that he's dead, but I think he's going to return. But go ahead and let me know your thoughts and theories in the comments down below. And please let me know what you thought about this trailer. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe so you can stay up to date on the MCU. And if you subscribe and leave a comment, you are automatically entered in our giveaway for a chance to win an Xbox Series X, a PS5, some Marvel Legends items, or some DC items. The winner gets to pick one item and we pick one winner at the end of each month. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.